the Mensha Palace Museum. And those who were up, um, when I was talking earlier on, I spoke a bit about the Mensha Palace, and uh, when I was talking about the Asantes. And um, does anybody recall anything about it? Yes, I see a hand. I saw a hand. <laughs> the the was coming. <laughs> okay. Does anybody recall what I said earlier on when I was speaking about the Asantes about the palace? No, the gold is still not there. Yeah, it's still there, but not in the palace. Yes. Okay, so I earlier on I told you that um, during the Yar Asantwa War, when the British were searching for the golden stew, they bent down the original palace of the Asantis. And um, when they had all, when they had been exiled, and during the, ten, the return of the king, Prempe, they built a palace. But then the Asantis refused it. And so, the people actually had to contribute and pay it before they allowed their king to be put in there. So the return of the king, that was Prempe the second, he was returned. And when he was returned, I'm um, oh, sorry, Prempe the first, when he was returned in 1924, the, the palace was built by 1925, so by the British. So they burnt down the original palace and then they built a new one. The people didn't put their king in there until they had paid for before they allowed their king to be put in there. Yes, they contributed and paid for the palace. Oh, wait a minute. Why didn't, why didn't the ones who burned it down pay for The original one was bent down. The palace is coming up soon. Yes, the, the original one was bent down. It was a different location. But when they were bringing the king, um, they had built a new one. And so they wanted to put the king in there. But the people refused and no. We don't know what they would demand. So they contributed and paid for the palace before they allowed the king to be put in there. Yes. But then, over the years, um, successive kings who have come actually have one of the kings, who was called Opokuare, converted the palace into a palace museum. And then right on the same big compound, a very big area, a very big compound, and all the land over there for the Asante Hene. It was part of it was turned, um, part of it was his home, and now part of it is all part of the complex where the new palace is. But then the old palace is actually a museum now. So in the museum, we're going to see live effigies of past kings and queen mothers, pictures, and then other artifacts of the Asantis which they have accumulated over the years. And then before we actually go inside to tour the palace, we would have a short documentary of the Asantis. Okay, and they would give you a very big knowledge of it. No, we are not there yet. We have to go through a bit of traffic to get there. But it's not far, yeah. And so the over the years, um, the the palace has gone through several uh, upgrades and modification. Um, but the, the most significant thing of the palace is, you know, the palace just don't just stand there, or it's not just built as a decorative thing, or just built as a building. But the main purpose of the palace is to act as one a go-to area if the people are in need or want a place for safety when they visit the chief and also to get counsel and advice and so it is kind of the government of the people the headquarters and so most of the time often time that you go to the palace they are setting people who are there and then you have to go through certain protocols before you get even to the the king and you realize most often i always call the asante and uh, king i call him king and then i call others chiefs well it's because of the how the asantes have raised their king they've like lifted him up because there are other chiefs and 
the status of the Asante king is actually very high because over the over over our history the Asantes were able to dominate majority of the land and so all of other chiefs that are around actually pay homage to the Asante king so that is how it's done in the Asante culture every 42 days they celebrate a festival called Akwesidae these were some of the institutions that were established by the Okonfo Anoche. Okonfo Anoche put certain things in place to help and then organize the people. In that Akwesidaya festival, its main purpose is stands for the cleansing of the stools. Now all the stools in all the kingdom of the Asantes, at the time the king would come and then they go to the stool room to pe perform certain rituals. And I told you the stools, when a chief dies or a king dies, the stool is blackened. And so the spirit or the soul of the past king resides in the stool. So they do some purification and some rituals so that those that have gone into the ancestral world will always have a safe passage and also continue and also be a blessing to the people who are living and so this is the linkage so most of the Akans celebrate a festival called the cleansing of the stools depending on which area you are uh, the name is different among other um, Akan society they call it Odra Odra and mostly the cleansing of the stool is done by a riverside or a lakeside that is why if you remember yesterday um, the print mother who came here said um, one of the places that the Asante Hene performs rituals and also pray is the Lake Bosom Tree. That is one of the biggest lake um, here and is, is a man-made lake. Sorry, it's, not, it's a natural lake. Um, so it's one of the places that they do their rituals and other places as well. And so every 42 days, all the chiefs would meet at the Mencia Palace and then they come and renew their allegiance with the Asante Hene. Yes. How many chiefs are there? There are a lot of chiefs. <laughs> over a hundred? Yes, over a hundred. Over a hundred. Over a lot of them. So when I say all the chiefs, I'm actually talking about in the jurisdiction of the Asante region. Okay. Yes. So those on that day, those who are present, majority of them who are present, would go to the palace to renew their allegiance. So they have a calendar where they count. But then every 10 days for every 10 years they celebrate the big festival called adayakese adayakese is when also they bring out the golden stool because the priest told them that they need to let the people know that we still have the golden stool so that when they see that yes we are one we are strong and we are united so the stool of the asantis symbolizes the soul and the embodiment of the asanti people the soul and embodiment of the Asante people. And so if you take away the stool, you've taken away the soul of the Asante. Did you say where the golden stool is located or do they have a... Do so they have a place that, and it's only um, known to the, the king and then the stool makers or the stool keepers, to special people, yes. And so during the festival, there's a beautiful culture display every chief and every person gathered be in their traditional way in Kinte and all dressed uh, with royal and everybody and then there's a big umbrella that you have that anywhere the king or the chief goes you have umbrellas covering them and all these paraphernalia have significance and have importance when we get to the palace you would see them and then they'll explain further to us and so this is one of the things that you will see that um, culture and history that the Asantes have preserved over the years. Okay, so one thing about the Asantes which is very unique is the fact that um, anytime they have to do anything, they don't take away their traditional element in that the pouring of libation, okay, and then the appeasement of the gods and all that. They always do it. And so some, sometimes you can't go to the Asantehene without taking in um, schnapps 
and bringing in some token uh, of gratitude and all appreciation and all that. So these are very, very important things that we are going, yes. Why do you always say snaps? Because that's the only you take it, snaps. <laughs> so it's, <clears throat> so snap is very colonial. It's uh, one of the things that during the colonial period and was introduced as a, as a Dutch or a Holland gin. So you're only taking snaps? Right? So, no. Oh, oh. But then one of the main things is my, oftentimes the schnapps. Okay, yes, I call. Real sweet, real sweet, right? No, it's not. No? It's very strong. It's, it's like, moonshine. yeah, like moonshine. Oh. Or vodka, yes. So you know why? Um, previously, it was actually we have a local um, gin um, that they used was palm wine, or um, the hard part of palm wine is called akpeteshi. Akpeteshi. <laughs> and it's a very fermented wine, um, either from the palm tree or the sugar or sugar cane. And so you present it. But then during the when the Europeans came, they brought in their rum, gin, and all that. And so the chiefs started developing the taste for it. And because it's a very quick thing when they take it, it goes in quick and then if you pour it on the floor it's you don't see it the trace of it again so the, you don't see the traces like water if you pour it you can still see it but because it's a spirit like you know a spirit yes. that's a no if you put alcohol, you put alcohol, alcohol. alcohol. yes okay. yeah okay. if you put okay. it on the floor it just right, right. It yeah. evaporates, evaporates. Yes. yes so okay. what i believe is those things, if you pour it down, the spirits are able to absorb it and take it. Yes, so that's one of the things. So that's why they, they have a strong taste for that and a strong one for that. And so anytime you go to a chief palace, there are certain protocols you, you have to take. So one of the protocols is, if you go in, in there, the first thing is you sit down. Two things, sometimes by the time you go there, the chief is already seated. Other times, you will sit before the chiefs come in. And when that is so, you have to rise. The chief sits down first, and then you sit down. And then the, the linguist would, or the chief will let the linguist come and welcome you. And so, but when the chief is coming, they welcome you, and then you welcome them as well. And then when they sit, what happens is, like, what is it? <laughs> 110 years old? No. No. Because we're not seeing the chief. <laughs> so after that, the, the schnapp that you bring, uh, most often you have to present two bottles. Yes. One of it will be used to offer prayers. Yes, to pour libation. Yes. So they offer libation. Uh, prayers for you and for the gods and ancestors for granting you safe journey to where you've come and then the gods and ancestors will protect you everything you're about to do and then also anytime they pray there's this part which is very very important they never take it out the fact that every evil eye every evil spirit every evil intention that anybody would have against you will never succeed yes so they always pray in that kind of manner. But before they even start, they call the spirits and the ancestors to come and assemble. So that's one of the things that they do. And then after that, you can now engage in conversation. Then the, the, the chief would ask the linguist to ask you why you were here, what was your mission here. Um, this place that you have come is very peaceful. You are the traveler who's walked and uh, come this far and so what do you bring or what do you have to say and then you start the conversation and negotiation also when you enter a chief's palace there are certain things that are common there is a tree traditionally there's a tree called the wisdom tree the tree grows certain white um, leaves 
and that white leaves that grows stands for wisdom for all people who have gray hair to tell you that the place you've come there are people who are wise there are old people who are so when you are talking you need to be mindful of what you say so that's one of the things that you would notice and then also um, that tree they call it Nyamidia the tree of God and most palaces and shrines there is a tree that tree is the link between God and earth or the, the location where it is so anytime they are pouring libation if that tree is there they pour the libation right under that tree and if they have to make sacrifices they sacrifice right under that tree so these are some of the things that you will notice um, there are other things that sometimes when you go to the palace some palaces will have a shrine right there some will not have will have a shrine somewhere else and so that is where the chief or the king would have to go and perform its rituals so that is some of the elements that you you get to see and then also um any question any question um, any question at all, not pet only pertaining to what I've just said or spoken?